Hey guys, welcome back to the Warhammer 40k Road Trader. Uh, we're obviously here in Telecos Epsilon. The path to Smaragdus Mundos is through Ocelio Prophecy, so let's do that. Okay, walk jump past without incident except for everyone except crew members on bridge duty. Everything's fine, okay. Let's save it here. Alright, let's make it unsafe and head on over. Okay, so it's another one of these storybook things. Entry A2014866010. Chronometer turns since the in 10 chronometer turns since the incident. Witness high day on 00110101. You claim that you left the Sanctum Narvis on the Lady Navigator's orders? Affirmative. This unit acted in accordance with maintenance protocol TRN 08353. Step 1. Sense the sacred mechanisms for the duration of 15 chronometer turns. Step 2. You failed to inform the bridge about the imminent jump. I want to know why. Data unavailable. The lady navigator ordered that she be connected to the void ship, but she did not call order the preparation of the machine spirits for warp translation. Cause a ritual that cannot be identified by this unit's capabilities. This unit received a command to interrupt protocol TRN 08353 and exit the Sanctum Navis. Okay. 30 chronometer turns since the incident. No, please, not the fingers. I'm going to break one for every word of a lie I hear coming from your mouth. Now talk. Please, you have to believe me. All we did was prepare the canvas and mix the lady navigator's blood into the paint. Then we were told to lock, lock open the shutters so that the Lord Captain could see everything that was going on inside the Sanctum Narvis from the observation chambers and... Grox S... Armor glass can't shield you from warp horrors. I swear it on my soul and the Golden Throne Master Enforcer. The Lady Navigator only wanted to paint a picture for a ritual of, or some such. That's all I know. She wasn't going to use the power in eye, but I still got as far as away from there as I could. That's all I saw, I'm telling you. 50 chronometer turns since the incident. Interesting picture of... Cassia? I'm assuming that's Cassia. We performed an emergency warp jump, barely activated the Geller field in time, and are now being dragged to throne nose where by an unknown force. The Lady Navigator and the Lord Captain are still unaccounted for. Now tell me, one more time, what transpired in the Sanctum Narvis? I escorted the Lord Captain to the observation chambers and yelled at the servant for leaving the shutters open. But then I was told it was on the rogue trader's orders. We could see the lady navigator clearly through the armor glass. She was lost in thought, staring at the canvas in front of her. She looked like she was completely unaware of the world around her. Soon the servants were ordered to leave the Sanctum Narvis, and the lady navigator picked up her brush and trance. She started dragging it across the canvas, painting one image over another, and another one over the last, and another, and then the captain noticed it. There was a thing on the other. Uh, Dash to the control panel, gave the order to shoot at the window, thus drawing Lady Cassia's attention. Called out to Lady Cassia. Uh, called out to Lady Cassia. Startled by the Lord Captain's cry, the Lady Navigator answered. That's when I realized that the armor glass between us and the Sanctum Narvis was gone, and the things in the painting, they broke free. And what happened next? I barely remember a thing. There was a bright flash, a purple blur. I remember feeling so scared that my knees were shaking. I remember my legs carrying me away like they had a mind of their own. As I ran, I heard screams behind me. The Lord Captain and Lady Cassia, they, oh God, Emperor, the creatures, they pulled them both inside the painting. Sir, Mistress Voxmaster, I have a report that needs to be delivered to the senior officers. The Lord Captain and the Lady Navigator were lost during the emergency warp jump. Their whereabouts are still unknown. I am sending you the interrogation report. 
notes and the recording. Okay, so I guess this was them going to that meeting in the that extra dimensional zone or whatever it was to meet with the House of Cellular leaders. Sector, no data, region, no data, location, no data, rela material, relation of the Lord Captain's personal account reported by no data. No, it's strictly classified. Access protocol holder, Stooge von Valancius. Disiphony or Celio's ritual did not go as planned. The warp disturbance triggered by the Lady Navigator's trance washed over the Sanctum Narvis. The void ship's machine spirits reacted to the surge of the immaterium interpreted as a call to action. Thus did the emergency jump into the unknown begin. Amid the shrieks of sirens, the clanging of shutters and the distant hum of the warp engine, some unknown will pulled the cap Lord Captain into the Sanctum Narvis toward the creatures from the living canvas, canvas that had already gripped the Lady Navigator's throat. Horrified, almost out of breath and struggling to scream, Cassia stretched out her hand and began slowly sinking sinking into her own painting. The Lord Captain Toughness 30 snatched a dagger from the floor and started hacking at hands reaching from inside the painting. This is the Lord Captain though, so I don't know if we end up doing the check with that or with our companion's skill or not. Succeeded. Okay. The ritual dagger of House Ocelio cleaved the billowing shadows and yet the painted hand reformed itself the moment after the blade passed through. Cassia went limp in the clutches of a horrific creation and was immediately pulled to the other side of the painting. A moment later, Stooge, still clutching the dagger, was likewise plunged into the depths of the world that Lady Navigator had created. Stooge awoke, finding himself in the middle of a gigantic, boundless, billowing nothingness. His body felt weightless, floating in a void strewn with hundreds of the Lady Navigator's colours. Some of them bright, warm and alluring, others more rose-cold and heavy. The Lord Captain swam toward the dark colours. Greyish blue waves swallowed the Captain and the feeling of lightness disappeared as his limbs grew heavy again. Stu fell on the hard floor of a laboratory cluttered with bats as tall as a human. Inside them were dozens, hundreds, even of, of repulsive mutants. Some had no arms or no legs or two heads or no face, or their innards turned inside out, but each had white skin, white hair, long clawed limbs, and ruby eyes. My lady, the child, is born. The tall old woman slowly approached one of the vats, reading stable mutations. None were de detected at any of the stages. Genes, identical, my lady. Hmm. Chances of survival? 100 times higher than any of the previous experiments. How long will it take to grow this child? I fear accelerating the process might cause the body to fail. The only one after years of... Silence. I understand the situation. Natural growth. I do not have that much time. We will have to go with a backup plan. Yes, Nova Toy will be done. The memory dissipated and a gust of silvery wind hurled the Lord Captain back into the ocean of nothingness. But this time the nothingness felt dismal instead of bright hues. All it contained was shadows of invisible monsters swimming by, shrouded by a nebulous veil of unfathomableness. The Lord Captain reached for the bright colors. Stooge plunged into a river of bright hues and flashes of rosy sunset and lilac carried him down the dazzling stream. Before long, the Lord Captain was standing in an idyllic garden permeated with the fragrance of flowers and the singing of birds. Servants in purple livery darted back and forth, attending to a withered old woman in a navigator's mask, sitting on her lap and smiling coyly to everyone was a little girl with ruby eyes and white hair. Be a good little girl, my child, until the day we meet again. With trembling hands, the woman handed the girl to the navigator in laboratory attire. I am out of time. Prepare the child for the Atlas transfer and destroy all records and mentions of the world of ETV. 
None must learn of that which took place here and remember. Her body must grow strong for it to set my power. And once I have returned, loyalty will be rewarded. The memory dissipated and a gust of silvery wind hurled the cap Lord Captain back into the ocean of nothingness, but this time the nothingness felt dismal. Instead of bright hues, all it contained was shadows of invisible monsters swimming by, shrouded by a nebulous veil of unfathomableness. The Lord Captain closed his eyes and remained adrift in the weightlessness. Stooge stayed in the ocean of nothingness devoid of any sensation or emotion until an ornate ritual dagger floated before his eyes and reminded him of a world that once seemed more real than this one. Someone's scream broke the delicate equilibrium of the Lord Captain's motionless body and the weightlessness released him. He plummeted into the maroon abyss of roiling illusions, but was now in full control of his body again. Then Stooge descended into the abyss toward the screams. The Lord Captain crashed from an immeasurable height to the bottom of a roiling abyss. In the next moment, Stooge saw two figures amid the billowing maroon mist. One of the figures, unnaturally gaunt and tall, was clutching the other smaller one in its claws, screaming furiously. The Lord Captain peered into the strange maroon mist. Ah, damn it. The crimson source confused the rogue trader's thoughts and emotions. He could hear whispers and moans coming from the depths. If he were to take one step, he would be forever lost in that violent mist and join the wretched chorus. But there was also a voice so desperately pleading for mercy. Yet whose voice it was, Stooge could not tell. The Lord Captain drew closer to look at the fig uh, figures. One step was all it took for some unknown force to notice the Lord Captain, seize him and drag him through the painting's twisted space. Now the Lord Captain could clearly see the dark shade of the long-dead navigator leaning over Cassia, clutching her neck in its clawed fingers, the shade screamed, You were given life because of me, you survived because of me, and here you are now because I willed it so. Bow before me, tell me what I wish to hear and your suffering will end. Go on, child, I've waited for so long, submit to me. Cassia looked exhausted, her body covered in hundreds of thin cuts, her lips lacerated, claw marks on her cheeks. Yet there was steadfast resolve in her eyes. I know who you, know, who you are, Tisiphone or Celio. I know what you crave. I saw it in the visions that you sent me again and again. I won't allow you. I will never allow you to become me. Cassia's fatigued voice quivered, but she was not about to yield in this battle. The Lord Captain urged the Lady Navigator to fight the monster to the bitter end. The Lord Captain's words attracted not just Lady Cassia's... Uh, okay. Uh, not just Lady Cassia's attention. Tisiphne or Celio, finally noticing the presence of a living creature in that bizarre world, turned to face the interlope and lunged forward, seething with rage. When the entity's claws were millimeters from the rogue trader's throat, Cassia opened a navigator's eye and a wave of unbridled warp energy obliterated Tisiphne's spectre before she realized what was happening. The lady navigator graced the Lord Captain with a tired smile. The abortive ritual had turned out to be a trap set for Lady Cassia by the previous novator of her house. But the rogue trader had ensured that her plan fell to ruin and now it's time to desert that accursed place. Okay. Cassia took the road trader's hand and guided him through the maroon mist and out of the painting. Their unconscious bodies were discovered in the Sanctum Narvis 20 Terran days after their disappearance, as soon as the road trader's void ship had emerged from the warp in an unknown system. Okay. The ritual recreated an ancient warp maroon which brought the rogue trader and the lady navigator to a world hidden in the eye of a warp storm. What secret does this planet's twisted heart contain? Okay. Well, let's save it there and then let's head in. Okay. Weird purple sun. Thing here. Okay. Let's 
save it, I suppose. Purple sun thing looks pretty cool, I have to admit. What's down here? Palace of the Atlas. Okay, so I guess this is where we have that meeting, I guess. So Cassia has to come. And yep, yeah, this looks looks like the team we want, so let's head in. Yeah, I don't know what it doesn't it's not telling us what that is. Okay. Let's head Choose over to your own start path. With. There is a barely noticeable imprint of a long clawed hand on the broken hot potato screen. Eternal. This looks like Eldar stuff. The Eldari Sanctum is blemished by human presence in their pursuit of ancient secrets. The navigators had no qualms about filling the ruins with machinery and supplies. Okay. Let's climb down, I suppose. This is a bit of a weird angle. The Ocelia navigators left no stone unturned in this Eldari temple. It is as if they were looking for something that they just wanted. Okay. Elite marksman in gloves. Okay. Nothing's impossible for this old officer. I walk the path less traveled. Let's go to the other side. Okay, there's a Imperial Quilla there, okay, pages. House of Cellular do not know what is taking place here. The navigators are frightened enough by its power as it is. The last experiment left three from the Sathala clan without a shred of reason. Empty shells bring no glory to House of Cellular or its lesser friend. We shall carry on. At last we have managed to implant the artifact in subjects who can wield its power. Perhaps all the navigators who perished in an agonizing torrent of energy were merely a symptom of our decline. I am tired of counting the dead. The weak have no place among those who have harnessed the Atlas. Their abilities have grown manifold and become significantly easier to control and more effective at resisting the ruinous influence of the war. Okay. It is all or nothing. Today is the day when my work is completed and the Starway Atlas takes its final form. The Satalas have already undergone the operation. All that's left is me. The Atlas that controls them all. Today I become the greatest Novator in the history of House Ocelia or I turn to nothing. This power is beyond compare. and All it took was a whim to make the wretched Satalas fall dead at my feet. It is as if I have a second heart beating in my chest, subjugating any with the ability to touch it. How regrettable it is that this power only extends to those or cellular nav navigators who have accepted a piece of the atlas within themselves. From now on, all children will be gifted with one at the initiation, and there will be no one who can match our greatness. Okay. The heart of the navigators is camp. This is where Tisiphone and Celia experiments hundreds of I years. follow my own path. Okay, there's nothing else here for now. We have to move forward, I guess. Nope, this way is forward. Locomotives are fully operational. The noble families from your primary world are looking for any excuse to destroy each other, Elantark. But leaders must strive for unity among their people. In all fairness, Iliad, you are in no position to judge humans for fighting among themselves. Everything I've learned lately about your kind suggests that a proclivity for feuding is universal. Immaterium routing and whenever the wearer uses a navigator power, they always physically dodge the next attack by moving to a random adjacent cell. Okay. 
Xenos. The ruined statues once depicted pages from the long history of Eldara. Ooh, how we got power across this path down there. Can I not climb it? Okay, let's try and climb it. Oh, there was a ladder there. Okay, quick save it here. Don't want any nasty surprises. Okay, let's see what we get. Plasma ring. A ring that fires a single plasma shot can only be used once per combat. Deals 30 to 45 damage and has 50% armor. Grenadier's backpack. The wearer and their allies are immune to damage from the wearer's grenade. First time the wearer uses a great grenade during their turn, they have a 50% chance not to expend the grenade. Interesting. Okay. Let's continue on then. There's something over here? I guess not. It just came from there. So. Let's quick save it here whole place makes me kind of nervous, so... <laughs> oh, cursed child, we had to ally ourselves with the Xenos once more to stop you. Okay. No matter, it is a small price to pay for the liberation of House of Celia from the chain of tyranny. Is this what's her name? Gone renegades. We followed the Atlas's call in your wake, child. Stand with us. House of Celia will not trade to Sifna's legacy for the false ideals of blind fool. Wait, what is happening? Ah. Uh... Celia Renegades is representative. Damn Xenos, this was not the bargain we struck. Throw and smite you. The navigator whose skin is so thin that it reveals the muscles, bones, and innards underneath. Clenches his augmented gold joy in contempt. Great Regents Envoy. What is this? The road trader and the traders to the house have lured the child into a trap set by Xenos. I wish my eyes were deceiving me, but now I can see clearly that great Regent Oronto was right. Descend us after your vessel. The sturdily built woman is armed with a pistol, and yet there are no sign there are signs of exhaust exhaustion in her posture. Her face is hidden behind a gem encrusted three-eyed mask, and her elaborate novice nobility vestments are stained with dry, dried blood and other evidence of recent combat. I too wish to be enlightened about what is happening here. You will stop defiling the remains of the hallowed ground of our ancestors with your semblance of speech and monarchy. The Harlequin's bright clothes glimmer faintly in the dim light of the system star and the sinister grin on his mask only adds to his menacing and aloof presence. The final act will soon unfold where you will pay for the deeds of your ancestors. Stay put and wait for the puppeteer to pull at your strings. Why, why are there Xenos ruins where the palace of the Atlas should be? Why is this place coated in an impenetrable blackness? I am suffocating. Cassia clutches a breastplate near where her Atlas is, her voice feeble and trembling. Three-eyed monkey who sees into Shia. The taint of your ancestors has begun to consume your body and soul. Pathetic fools with an insatiable lust for power that is not yours. Ending your misery will be merciful. Taint? Do you mean the Atlas, Xenos Trader? Silence Trader, the Atlas is the sacred relic of House of Celia. It is what elevates us above the rest. How dare you? 
The regent's envoy abruptly loses her breath with a groan and she clutches her chest where her atlas is implanted. I refuse to accept this. Impossible. What is this place? We call planets such as this one Chrome World. They came to be long before my time, back when all of the Eldari were a united people whose empire stretched from one edge of the galaxy to the other. It is a world beneath the first stars, an unblighted world. I never thought that I would come to find one. Add to the outcast words, other than my eternal astonishment at your curious troop of people. What is this taint you speak of, Xenos? Do you not see it? Harlequin's voice booms throughout the ruined temple. When you, Monkey, discovered this throne world, you tainted it with your crude technology, despoiled it of its relics, ruined all there was to the last stone, but worst of all, you sullied the souls of our ancestors reposed in their sacred vessel, the spirit monolith. He points his thin finger at the remarkable crystal floating behind his back and the Harlequin's around him, tying the grips on their weapons. Like the sea of bottomless blue. Cassia looks around her with a stunned expression of the gaze, shifting from one sinus to another. I I did not know that living things could exude such saturated hues. I wish I could paint this ocean a different color. Uh, examine the hovering crystal. The enormous translucent stone shares a strange resonance with this place. You can sense the energy emanating from it. Mysterious restless, coagulated, it resembles a giant heart that has been plucked out of its owner's chest. Its crystal clarity is pierced by hundreds of dark veins that have taken root within like a terrible stillness. How did the navigators of House Ocelia taint the spirit monument? The experiments. This is where she conducted her experiments. Tisif. No, it is not possible. To consult with Xenos is to violate the word of the god emperor. It is known to all that Tisiphne or Celia executed anyone who showed any interest in the enemies of humanity. Is that so? And why is it that every piece of metal or fabric in this place bears our houses, coat of arms? Open your eyes. Quiet. Harlequin's tone is mild, but it is not a request. I'm unsurprised that the truth is hidden from your gazes. Three are not he who seen the Sha'e. I realized at the moment I met the first of you. Wretched. Begging us to help you destroy your own kid, I sensed it within you, our ancestors call. Their pleas, their endless torment, I knew that what you found was a crone, and I humbly waited for the day you would lead me to it. What is the meaning behind your words, Altair, Troop Master? You know the answer already, Outcast. You have already known. What was that about? What answer have you always known? Elliot glowers at Cassia, so that is why, that is why your presence makes my soul shrink to the size of a river pearl and my throat choke in a collar of thorns. That is why your words seep into my soul like poison, leaving wounds that will not heal. There is a shard of the spirit monolith inside you, monkey, twisted, perverted, invigorating you by making my ancestors suffer. Alas, you are right, outcast. The ancestors of the three-eyed monkey sought to command the power of the spirit monolith and yet they suffered failure time and again. Eventually, they discovered a way to harness this power in a terrible way, torturous and unforgiving. They shattered the monolith into many shards and weakened the souls within. And then the Harlequin trembles with fury. Then they placed the shards of the spirit monolith inside their bodies to empower their ability. I never wished to learn such harsh truths about my own house. Cassia buries her face in her hands and you feel waves of despair spreading from her life frame which suddenly appears as fragile as the glass. Neither Theodora Convalances nor Tisiphne was infallible, but that doesn't mean we are powerless to rectify the errors of our ancestors. You say that only because you wish to soothe me. The renegade navigator stares at Cassia in shock. You. You are more than just a tyrant's heir. You are a successor to a mad heretic, a betrayer of the faith. You must be destroyed, you and the Atlas, once and for all. You think the solution is so easy, don't you, Monkey? When you die, your souls become captives inside the spirit monolith. This process is deranging to our ancestors. 
who have served as the monolithic guardians for eons. It is equally agonizing to the souls of your dead, and the more monkey souls that monolith absorbs, the more volatile it becomes. The Eldari and the monkey have spent many a dance battling for supremacy within the monolith, and its integrity is waning, and you sense it too. The only way to free our ancestors from the pain is to separate the monkey taint from the spirit monolith. My troop is here to perform just that. We will all will play our parts today, and when the final act of this age-long tragedy begins, the monkey players will exit this world state. Sinister shadows dance on the harlequin's mask as it draws an unknown device from its sleep. The Atlas must certainly be destroyed, but surely the entire house cannot be expected to serve penance for Tisiphone's crime. Is there no way to, whatsoever to separate the navigator's souls from those of the Eldari without killing one or the other? The house of Cello can never hope to redeem themselves. I will not stand here and let some duplicity no slaughter navigators. Cassie is the inheritor of the one who bound the spirit monolith to the navigator's body. Listen to whatever she has to say. She is not the woman her predecessor was. What do you say to this Xenos' assertion? Is there no way whatsoever to separate the navigator's souls from the, those of the Eldari without killing one or the other? The Xenos thinks for a moment. I do not believe there is. The three-eyed monkey have desecrated this place and I will not put the spirit monolith at risk just to help them avoid the consequences of a lamentable performance. The Atlas must certainly be destroyed, but surely the entire house cannot be expected to serve penance for Tisiphone's crimes. What? Perish the thought. The Starway Atlas is the foundation of House Ocelio's power. Whence do you suppose we draw the strength to fare the Sea of Souls? Is this not the greatest library of novice nobility knowledge across the Coronas expanse and Calixus sector? Should the Atlas be destroyed, House Ocelio will face oblivion. Nonsense. Tif Tisiphone created the Atlas only a few centuries ago, whereas the history of House Ocelio dates back to the last millennium. We have always been a house to be reckoned with, but when Tisiphone arrived in the expanse, she set her sights on a crown of power that could let her family branch dominate the rest. And where has that left us? Our bodies are corrupted with Xeno heresy. God Emperor, forgive your children for committing a trespass so heinous. What do you say to this Xenos' assertions? Well, not. It turns to the Harlequin tree. I cannot change the past, it is true. Nor can I change the fact that my house is forever tainted with disgrace born of Tisiphone or Celio's hubris. Yet all of us here today have the power to change the future and halt the unending suffering that is granted both your kin and mine. You? You suggest that Monkey and the Eldari change the future together? The Harlequin leans forward curiously. I must admit, my leading lady, I am confounded by your audacity. Go on. My Atlas, Cassia places a hand on her gilded breastplate. If you can free the phantoms of my house from a spirit monolith, guide them to enter my Atlas. Their experience and wisdom will help steer House of Celia onto the path of truth and allow future generations to avoid the calamitous pitfalls of their forebears. K. Moray, my leading lady, the shards of the monolith are lodged inside the chest of every monkey bound to you by ties of blood. How exactly do you intend to return them? I shall use the atlas to sever my subject's connection to the spirit monolith, and then I shall extract its shards from every navigator of House of Celia. This artifact is Planted at birth, but that does not mean that the ritual cannot be reversed. I witnessed its creation through Tisiphone's eyes in my vision. I lived it over and over again through the mer memories of the Satala clan. I can recreate the ritual that will return the souls of your kin to you and save my people's lives. Cassia, are you really capable of this? I'm confident in my abilities, more so than ever before. Seldom do humans and Xenos get the chance to resolve their conflicts without violence, my second Lady Cassia's proposal. The Harlequin remains as still as a garish statue for several minutes, then the mellifluous voice behind the mask says, 
I'm willing to try, Monkey. Uh, no, the Regent's envoy draws her pistol. I won't let you destroy the Atlas, even if it is the child's wish. Lady or seller, you are too young, inexperienced. You simply cannot comprehend. You address the future Novator of House of Celio, one who survived the massacre of Urak V, who has lived following an attempt on her life at the Palace of Dargonus, who has restored her house's stability in what scant time she has been freed, while you, all of you, have spent years destroying it from within. You address one who has passed through the Tempest of the Sea of Souls to the true Atlas as a rogue trader's ally. Yet still you call me unworthy, don't you? Young, inexperienced? Kneel before me and I shall forgive you your insolence. Fellowship test. Alright, nice. House Ocelia was always loyal to Novator Tisiphone. Henceforth, it will be loyal to her successor, even if you see fit to lead us down a different path, my lady. Are you done with your performance, monkey? Then stand aside and do not interrupt me. Ancestral souls have found peace and corruption no longer endangers the monolith or this world. The Harlequin's narrow shoulders now look completely relaxed. Remember our agreement, Cassio Celio. We will soon meet in this place again so that you can give us the shards. And now, be gone from our world, monkey. Ah, okay. Traveled far darker paths. You have played your part well, Ellen. Your performance is ended. Now leave this stage and never return. Okay. Time worn manuscript. Let's see. There was a time when I believed that I would lead my house to prosperity. In truth, Fortune and blessings have long since been passing us by as if the Coronas expanse itself is trying to oust the Orcelio children from its bounds. If nothing changes in the near future, all of us will wither like night flowers at dawn or perhaps face our ultimate fall. Upon my word, the sea of souls itself must favour me. During the last jump, I saw into the eye of a vicious storm. Within it, amid the ruins of a Xenos world, was a treasure mighty and dangerous, not unlike our own power and I found a way to reach it. I drive away the memory of our journey and the cost that our house suffered. The ritual alone was, no matter, the goal will be worth the price and due effort is all that is needed of us. By the grace of the Emperor, we made it through that terrible tempest. However, the Eldari ruins appear to have dampened the crew's spirits. Those pitiful commoners talk too much. Tensions in the camp are rising. I should cut out the tongues of those who witnessed the first experiment. This information cannot be allowed to reach the ship. No, not just them. I shall have the Satala clan dot the tongue of every lowborn. Okay. Anything worthy of my attention? Not go down there. Or Xenos. This was a piece of an altar that the ancient Eldari used for some long forgotten ritual. Okay. The Eldari's gods once walked among them, teaching, guiding, protecting them from harm. There were no boundaries between mortal creatures and their patrons. Okay, so I guess we're done here. Now. I need no farseer to guide my future. Alright, let's head out then. Okay, let's talk to Cassia now. Oh, how nice 
nice of you to grace me with your presence. I was just thinking back to our journey to the Palace of the Atlas. That is, to the world of Xenos. <laughs> Remembering that most reckless act has enveloped my mind in a whole palette of hues. But when I think of the great risk you took for House Orcelios and my own sake, an azure shawl instantly descends on my shoulders, and amber sparks flash inside my soul. Please accept my sincerest gratitude. So now you are the full-fledged Novator of House Orcelio? You of all people should know that succession is a lengthy and tiresome process. <sighs> While my entire house is busy preparing for a grand council at which I am to ceremonially inherit the late Tisiphone's title, I have decided to remain by your side. To relish just a little more of this carefree liberty. For as soon as I am summoned to do my duty, we must say our farewells. What awaits the navigators of your house now? The Xenos have managed to free the souls of our ancestors from their confinement. The memory and wisdom of those that came before us will serve our house, helping build upon the ruins of the present a firm foundation for generations to come. I believe in that, as I believe in the divine light of the Emperor. Okay. Having discovered the truth about the stairway, Starway Atlas, has he allowed the Harlequin to separate the souls of the cellular navigators from the Xeno artifact and absorb the wisdom of their ancestors into their own Atlas? Okay. So now the entire power of the Atlas is in the Novator's hands? I suppose so. If by power you mean priceless knowledge. As for the special powers granted by the Xenos souls, the navigators of House Orcelio will once again have to contend with their own bodily and spiritual limitations. However, I am undaunted by the prospect, for our line and our gene have never been weak. House Orcelio will succeed, and soon we will rise again, draped in white and gold. Of course. I will try to answer any questions you have. Okay, I guess that's it. I have enjoyed your company. Thank you for the conversation. Alright. So that was quite interesting. Arajai, okay. That revelation about the House of Sellers history or what well, recent history is very interesting. Uh, I'd be curious to see how that, or whether the story progresses a bit more and we see a bit more of what happens with the Atlas and the actual meeting. Although doesn't look like there's a meeting anymore because that looks like the uh, what we needed to to actually do companion quest. Yep, yeah, here it is. Let's see if we can find the price of power. Figured world offered more questions than answers to the rogue trader and the lady navigator. A troop of Harlequins was lying in wait in these ancient Eldari ruins. What is the connection between these Xenos and House of Celia? Lady navigator wishes to discuss all that transpired on the ancient Eldari world once she has had time to collect her thoughts. Uh, okay, so I guess this is this sort of phase two of all of the the uh companion quests I'm pretty sure there's an act five so i wonder if there's going to be a third phase to all their quests but i guess we'll find out uh, yeah i think that well where do we want to go next oh that's right where we want to go next is Siege of Euphrates too, so that's Emperor's Palm. Uh, so I think we can 
just quickly do that right now, actually. Let's head back up to the Six Pants map. Try new routes. Is there anything? Nope. Okay, so there's no other path here. System Speculo goes to Frozen Prince, goes to there. Tenebrous Aquae. Nola Sept. Are there any other rumors? I don't quite remember. Okay, so how do we get there? We'll sell your prophecy. Trinitos. System Speculo. Emperor's Palm. Are there any other planets we need to or any other systems we might need to check out. I don't think so. Alright, so let's head out. New ruler. Completed development project. Oh, okay. During the period designated as the night shift, the air throughout the ship suddenly turned stale. Those who are awake reported feeling incredibly tired. Those who were asleep later reported having a horrible night. The Xenos Iliad, one of the captain, old captain's personal retinue, was found delirious in one of the ship days. The enforcers were unable to free her from a trance. This is the, I think this is one of the same ones. Though, shouldn't she not be doing this anymore? Uh, that shit. Yeah, we have seen this one already. That Okay, let's see. So, completed a development project. Now we need to establish a new colony. Now, where do we go from here? Ada map. Ada map, Tenebrous Aquae. So, we could do that. Make it safe. Uh, let's save it here. Okay. Let's take the dangerous path, see how this goes. A warp breach. This time trouble came straight to the bridge. Odorous mist teeming with swaying nightmarish figures has rolled through the ventilation shafts into the command center. The officers are suffocating from this wave of horror. There is no time to deliberate, deliberate to battle. Okay then, so there's a fight. Oh, it's a fight on the bridge too. Very interesting. It's 17 so they're all basically in front of us so that's fine that's okay deal with that most of them are up here so let's put cassia up here over here actually stooge Three down here, I assume there's three over here too. And then up here there's three, six, nine, eleven. Okay, so most of them are up here. So our plague bearers are up here. Okay. So let's see. Let's put Stooge here. No, let's put Stooge here. Heal it can go here. Jay can go here. Avalard can uh Avalard can go up here too. And Pascal will be the one running around helping out with the other guys. Let's do that. Okay, let's see. Jay. Let's give it to return to Jay. Maria. Ten 
Tell me, and it is done. Okay, overwhelmed. It's You've got a problem. I've got a price. Uh, let's see. So let's not use the first. Let's go with Elliot. Okay. Let's see. Let's do perfect spot. I won't do wandering. I won't we'll use this one. Let's see if we get anything happening. Looks like we can. Okay, we eliminated of them. Alright, free shot, eliminated another two, perfect. Uh, let's put prey on one of the fake bearers. Okay, now we're gonna drag I am a navigator. And we can't do anything about that. That's fine, let's do this one. Voice of command on Stooge. Take aim, of course. And bring it down. And let's start sniping. Okay, so. Perfect spot. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Don't think we got over 10. We did get that secondary shot. That's nice. Probably should have used killing it. That's fine. And. Ooh, that blade pair is taking a ton of damage. Let's take it out. Elusive Shadow. Seven, ten. Okay. Let's give Stooge a extra turn again. Well, not extra turn, but the the uh, finest owl. Kill. Okay. Scalp forward. Got the track down there. Tactical knowledge. Yeah, let's just do that. And I'll use trail on the rotten heavy. Okay. Basically eliminated everyone up here already. hit anything else so don't seem to be able to transfer that so that's a bit annoying but well that's fine uh, since Pascal is down there let's use let's use that stew so you can run over here Start setting up for the next turn. Okay, you can hit from up there. That's not bad. My faith strengthens me. Since Elliot's turn is coming up next, we can charge up there and then she can be the one that shoots. Shoots these guys. Okay. I must. 
do that and we'll do claim the hole. Claim the bounty, not claim the hole. Okay. Scar point analysis. And drop another trap. Pray on that guy. Okay. And Elliot can just do this. Oh, let's just end the turn. Don't need anything too special here. And run across all the way here. Alright, nice. I like it. And let's use it in my sights. Okay. Three. Weapon at the ready. Now we just wait for Stooge's turn. Missing Stooge, we go here. Perfect spot. Let's do. Okay. Easy. And now this guy dies. Alright, nice. And we're done. Whatever you wish. Okay, so that was a bit nasty, but we do enough damage now that it's not that big of an issue, which is nice. Even though the the latest big patch nerfed the officers, I think the the uh, the snipers. The the we start. Opera, operative assassin sniper is still pretty strong, so can't complain about that. Coronas expanse map. I've never here. wondered so much before. Yep. Okay. Let's save it here and head on back out. Keep going to get to Empress Palm. We have 74 profit factor now. Okay. Well, let's head in. Okay, so there's a siege. And, all right, well, we're basically about to just head in and just talk to the Adeptus Mechanicus. So I think this is a good place to end the episode. Uh, I might. In between episodes, I might have to check colony management and sort a bit of that stuff out, but uh, we learned a lot this episode about the House of Cellular Navigators, and we're about to deal with the siege at Euphrates 2 in the next episode, which should progress the main stories. And given that I think we've finished up most of these quests, the only one I really need to figure out is uh, the Marajai one, but other than that, I think we're almost ready to progress to think what would be at five, or at least very close to, or at least this should take us to the next step towards finishing at four anyway. So thanks a lot for joining me in this particularly interesting episode, and in the next episode we'll be trying to uh, liberate Euphrates 2 from the cult of the final dawn so thanks a lot for joining me for this one and I hope you join me in the next one see you then